right guys, we're only passing some time on this while this lockdown is on, so um, no fishing, no fishing footage either to share with you, so we're on with, uh, I previously asked for um, a few questions and, and stuff from you guys, um, just to, as a note before I continue with this video, I'm, go I'm going to do a live stream at some point in the future, I've, I've ironed out a few issues, I did a bit of a test recently, Chase for everybody who came and helped me, um, but I'm going to do that again, I'm going to give you a bit of notice this time, put it on one evening. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to do like a, a Q&A thing, but I'm going to do it uh, just a normal video style. So I'm going to answer some other questions that's been previously asked on Facebook, YouTube and all that kind of stuff. I'll try and answer a few anyway. So I'll get cracking on. Uh, some of them are short answers, some will be long in depth. I've not planned anything, not rehearsed anything, so let's see what happens. So we've got Matt Wooldridge. Um, he's asked me, um, what makes rivers your favourite place to target? Um, I just enjoy rivers, they're a bit more scenic. Uh, a bit more movement, a bit more you can sort of look for places to fish, you know, slacks and all that kind of stuff and bends and everything's different. A canal, canals are good, some good fishing in canals and especially I know where you live there's some good good uh, fish but I just like a bit more natural, I like to, you know, uh, enjoy my fishing, I'm not, it's not just out of catch fish so I like to try and work out a river, read, you know, read how it works and how it lies and that and, you know, you've got a bit of flow to deal with, a bit of depth, a bit of varying depth to deal with and snags. Uh, and he just says as well, uh, what made you decide to, to start filming? Um, I started blogging a long time ago, the usual web blog where you know, written form. Uh, and I one day bought a GoPro, just thought, oh, I could go a GoPro. And I, I, I actually wanted to do some underwater footage. Uh, and the GoPro then led to strapping it on my head and capturing some awesome footage. And it just went from there, and that's, that's how it went. I never planned on YouTube, never planned on anything uh, as big as what it's kind of got to. So... Um, <laughs> not the most, not the best TV presenter. I'm not the most knowledgeable lore angler and stuff, but uh, it just kind of grew from there. So, um, Adrian Evans, uh, can I not look at here and this and all as double crimps? It's not working for me. Yeah, double crimps. I've done double crimps on the heavier strain, like the hundred pound. Um, but anything lighter, I tend to tie a knot in it, um, just because it's easy. Um, but yeah. Uh, I've not had the hundred pound stuff, but not not as neat as crimps. Um, but I had somebody else recently who not double crimps weren't working, so there's something that we we're not doing right. But double crimps, uh, double barrel, so you go through through the bottom, through the barrel, put your swivel on your clip, back through the barrel again, and then the tag end took back in again. It should all it should do. And that's how I've done mine. I think that's how I did mine. And um, in fact, that one's going on. That one's going on. That's one that I made. So, super long. It's basically that long. It's a beast. So, yeah, that's crimp taunts. Got swivel, got clip, swivel, crimp taunts. Got some shrink tube on. Same at this end as crimps here, yeah, double barreled. Can't really see what's done, but I'm sure I've gone through a few times. But, yeah, but tie knot in it, it works. Just not as neat. Give a little bit of a tag end hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, a bit of a tag end, I know that's it, but yeah, it does work. Um, I one thing to remember, when, when you put your, you'll, you'll you need a pair of pliers, but you'll pull it tight, your knot will pull, but the knot won't close up, you know, like a like your crimps version, it'll, it'll pull to a loop like this, and at some point it'll dig in. At that point, don't try and pull any further, just pull to it till it tightens up, and that's it, that's it, it's set at that point. Got Peter Walsh, uh, he says, I've only been piking about a year now, thinking of getting a bait caster rod and reel, are any advantages, advantages over a fixed pool? Um, they've both got advantages and disadvantages. Um, generally, you'll find most people struggle to cast light bait cast, light, light bait casters, and it's easier to cast light lures like small jigs and stuff and little cranks and stuff on a, on a fixed pool. Generally, that's most people, and that's most setups. Um, and then as you go heavier, there's still some people who use a fixed spool for the heavier loads, but you'll generally find that um, the multipliers and bait casters are built for uh, heavy loads. Yeah. So um, your advantage is that they're, they're usually built for to deal with it. Uh, the pickup speeds are, are better, and you know different kind of gear ratios and things that you can have on your multiplier reels, your bait caster reels, will be to do with your retrieve of your load. Um, 
what else I'd like to uh, I find it comfier to fish with a bait caster all day around a fixed spool. Um, a fixed spool you hold it like this and you kind of you get a bit of a strain on, on this point, whereas a bait caster it's a bit more, it just feels better. Um, I can't really think of any, any more really, but like I say, you'll, you'll struggle on the light stuff. A lot of people getting into a DFS, what they like bait casters, but it's not really easy unless you get some half decent kit. Um, what else we got? Sean Frausters, Scottish buddy, uh, if you were a bait fish, would you rather be being chased by a two pound perch or a 15 pound pike? Um, I think I'd probably have a better chance of escaping a perch, but uh, especially over a short distance pike than a nail minute, big mouth, all on teeth, uh, and there's no real going back from a, an attack from a pike, his mouth's massive. Mike Fagan, what happened to Eddie, Eddie Woodchucker, do you two not fish together anymore? Um, Hey, which was doing his own thing. Um, we used to be good mates. We're not really fishing together these days. He's doing his own thing. Um, I'm sure you can find him somewhere on, on internet doing what. But no, I fish on my own. Fish with Neil. Uh, good bit of Neil. Um, I'm just doing what I've always done. Being myself. Yeah, sponsored all that kind of shit. But um, doing myself, enjoying fishing, sharing a bit of help. Not trying to be anything that I'm not. Not trying to be a big superstar or out and uh, just being me. Just be myself, so yeah, do my own thing. Jordan Jenkinson, what do you class as your all-time red letter session? A couple, a couple, I'd probably say. Uh, I've had a few, I've had a few days on on, on camera that's gone well, gone well. Obviously that one epic day video that's been a bit spectacular. That that did really well. You know, everything. It was a really bad day, and then it all went right. Um, I've had a day, I've had a day, I say I've had a day, it was a, a two and a half hour session once where I caught thirty-five pike in two and a half hours in one spot, in one peg, believe it or not. Uh, that would have been epic. Nothing massive, but um, yeah, that's just awesome fishing. Um, uh, red letter session. Yeah, uh, and I've had a couple of days on boat. We had a recent day on the boat, me and Neil. It was probably one of his best sessions where um, Shame wasn't filming, but I think we had uh, a 27 pike to the boat, this is winter fishing, this is pike fishing on, on lows, then 27 pike to the boat on a river, um, finished off with a 24-12 for me and you know that would have, that for me was an awesome day's fishing and I've probably had similar days to that before but that, that's that's a good day's fishing, one epic day. Um, what else we got? We've got um, Colin Braniff, um, he's asked me for what's your favourite perch lows, um, nothing too too technical what we've got on here. So this is my standard low box that I, I, I take everywhere at the minute. So usual stuff, most people who watch my stuff will know. Relax copy or she had two and a half inch is probably my favourite size, but I do use three for perch, but two and a half inch, selection of jig heads, three, five, ten gram. Um I do use the um the gator, gator gun perch baits, I do use those, I've got a pack in my bag, uh, but generally my favourite perch lows, other than the softies, Rapala, Jordan Shadrat, 7cm Fire Tiger, I've used it loads, caught some big fish on that. Um, you probably won't, you won't catch numbers, and especially when we're a bit nervous these days, we're going fishing for them. Not the most finesse, but it'll capture a big fish. Um, don't have to be fire tiger, any colour, noise and that. Um, that's probably really it, mate. That's that's all I do. You can take a spinner with you. I've done done really well on spinners before. These are all rusty and old now, and knackered, but basically, spinner, carry a spinner. But um, yeah, copy toes. I've also got some. Um, now these will be in the low bag. But anything like yeah, somewhere in there, the Zeman TRDs are another option just to slowly drag it along the bottom. Um, I've caught some nice perch on them, but not, not as many big perch as I've caught on. I don't fish them as much, by the way, so that's probably why, but not as many as I've caught on a copy toe, and nowhere near as many as I've caught on a Jordan Shad wrap. So that's, that's me, basically. If I go perch fishing, I'll tend to um, fish with. Um, cranks to cover water, like the fire tiger, like the joint shed wrap, 
I'll cover water with that and, uh, and if I find some perch I'll probably switch to a poppy tour and try and fish it a bit more. You can bounce it along bottom, you don't have to just drag it in, but you can bounce it along bottom and um, that's kind of how I, I fish. I don't really go fishing loads of sessions day after day after day where I'd be fishing more finesse and all that kind of stuff. So that's probably why I don't catch as many big perch as I could do. But like I said, I just go fishing and enjoy. Um, I got one here from Seb Pendle. Uh, and he's put, what's your PV and when, how do you catch your first pike? God, that's going back some years. Uh, I can't remember catching my first pike. I can remember fishing as a kid for pike, and we used to fish with a few mates, um, just with anything we got on, on a local pond, and we'd, you know, we'd go, I probably, would, probably caught my first pike there, but I can't remember it. I, I can't, I'd like to give you a story of me remembering this pike that came up, and I was hooked, and you know, that kind of thing. I just went fishing a few times, and eventually I got the bug. Um, I, would, I probably would have been about, I don't know, maybe 10 or 11 when I was pike fishing first, especially when I used to go on my own. Um, and my PB comes not many years after, I was um, 14 or 15 and I was fishing um, late summer with a surface popper. And I, I saw it, I'd had a couple of fish and I saw a splash and I was like, oh, that looks like the biggest, biggest swirl. And I did an extra long cast to it and it couple of twitches and this low comes across the surface and it just, you know, just jig it like this and it pops like water splash and it makes a popping sound. And then this thing just exploded and, well, it was a ridiculous 27 pound pike and uh, I won't geared up for it, I won't tilled up for it and it was a nightmare. I had my net, it won't fit in my net, so I had to basically just wade out and just pick it up and then try and get this hook out of its mouth, it was just not easy. So yeah, I learned the hard way, but I managed to look after it, fish went back all right and um, I, said, I, I think somebody possibly caught that again because I heard somebody else catching a 20 a big pike there before. So hopefully did everything right, but yeah, that's my PB and I've still not beat it. I've had a couple of 25s recently, 24 12 as I just mentioned. But um, I'm not really a big fish angler, I don't really fish. I, I'm no doubt I fish places where there's a bigger pike, and you know, there is 25 to 30 pound pike um, in in some places that I fish. And I'll just say I'm not lucky, I don't, I don't go for um, you know, like, like baits and live baits and sticking it out in a certain spot. I just go fishing and enjoying the loads. I'm going from, uh, apologies for pronouncing this, but I know he's a, a top angler and uh, plenty of stuff on social media himself, but Anuka C. Boris Petri. I have no idea how to say that. Apologies, mate. But um, if you had to choose from soft lows or hard lows, what would you choose? Uh, hard lows. I do like my soft lows. Um, especially, I've, you know, got into stuff like the Gator Guns and the big XL grubs and all that kind of stuff in recent years, oh, not recently, about probably seven or eight years ago to be honest, but uh, I do fish them and they have, they have the day, but if I can I'll, I'll fish on jerk baits. Uh, even with the, the lighter lows, you know, fishing for perch or trout, I'll be using cranks more than anything, small cranks and even small jerk baits, even like, you know, proper little twitch baits and things, I prefer to use that, I prefer to catch on them, I just enjoy that kind of fishing. Um, I know some days I'll, I'll catch less because if I switch to softies and you know slowly working on bottom, I, I might catch more, more fish. But I, I just I just enjoy that. So, <coughs> um, Liam Winsper, I've got yours covered about locals for different occasions. We've done that in a, in a future video. Um, my buddy Sean Dean, how doing, mate? Um, name one place you'd love to go fish for pike or musky. Uh, well, that answered it straight away. It's answered itself. Canada's my place. Pike and musky. Um, I've never, never caught a musky. Obviously, no musky over here. But I'd love to go uh, fish Canada. I remember watching old TV programs years ago and more recent stuff like fishing adventure. They're going fishing in Canada and muskies are seen like you know, pike on steroids. Out there. They're really ag aggressive. Not always as easy as, as pike to catch. So I'm led to believe, but. Uh, yeah, anywhere, anywhere in Canada, I've not got like one place, but anywhere that's middle of nowhere, you know me, I'm a bit of a, I do like to fish on my own, so anywhere in middle of nowhere, just go fishing and, yeah, that'd be my thing. Um, and he says like, anywhere in Will, you haven't been, if it, that's why, it's kind of, my, Canada's my place, I've not fished there, and I'd, I'd love to, um, Sweden's closest I've been to that sort of um, style fishing, you know, fishing in middle of nowhere, they are, they are similar, but uh, Canada's on my list. 
Liam, Liam McGowan says, cheers for the lows. Yeah, cheers, buddy. Thanks for life. Thanks for buying from the shop. Much appreciated. Um, where have we lost it? Uh, what not do you re recommend for tiny tracers? Uh, I'm not going to show you it because there's, um, there's videos elsewhere on YouTube. Just search it. But um, from my, my eye, braid to my swivel on my trace, I just use a Palomar knot. Um, I've used it for years. I remember asking this question years years ago when I were, when I were first at starting up. And somebody went, use a Palomar knot, and I learned the Palomar knot, it's not hard. Watch the videos, do a Palomar knot, pull it tight, and uh, never had it one, one break. Um, yeah, it doesn't slip, it just holds, simple as that. Um, so I've never learned, I've, I do know a few other knots, but I've never learned many other knots, I'm not one for fancy knots. So that way, one from Bryce, Rye. What would you su suggest for a starter set up for low fishing, braid, rod, reel, and what was? Um, it's hard to answer that because it could be um, light lows or heavy lows, but if I was saying start something, just low fishing, I'm presuming you're just saying low fishing, not pike fishing, just something like this. So this is that rod's a day with Pro Rex. I won't go for that rod because it's 100, 100 quid rod. You don't need to buy that. You can spend 30, 40 quid on a rod and it'll be just, it'll be just as nice and it'll do the job. Probably not just as nice, but that's a nice rod. But you um, don't have to spend that. Uh, reels are not bad actually. So that rod, by the way, is like, um, let me just check for it exactly, somewhere, where does it say it? That's 7 to 21. So that's, you can fish soft plastics, like a little coffee tub, little tanks and things like that. Um, 7 to 21 is a good size. You can put 15, 20 pound braid on. You can get a, a reel, like the, this Dewa. Which one is that one? Dewa Ninja or something, that one is, I can't remember. 2,000 size, 2,500 size reel, still the 20 pound braid, 15, 20 pound braid, and you know, you've got your wire trace still, and that's that's all you need. Go fishing with what I've got in there, the pile of um, jotted shad wrap, soft load, and just get about, and, uh, and that's it. Like I say, to answer your question, I'm only guessing you just mean a bit of light low fishing, but it could be anything. And if it were pike fishing, I'd say get a rod rated something like 30 to 80 or 30 to 100 grams uh, and fish sort of that sort of size. So I still put like a 3,000 size spool at reel on it uh, and fish with that sort of size lows. Um, you can still do a, um, a squirrely bait, you can still do a busted jerk. Um, not the 40 centimetre reels, but a 30 centimetre um, Savage Gear reel eel. Um, lip blows, Savage Gear lip blow, that kind of stuff, some of, some of the um, Spark Sonka stuff, that's perfect range for that, that kind of casting range, 30 to 100 gram. So if you're pike fishing, just go for that. Don't, don't spend silly money uh, on a rod to start with, uh, but try and spend a bit more on a reel if you can, just because the reels are a bit more, um, when you get a nice reel, it's more enjoyable. I think that's, a, that's all the Facebook questions, we're on to some YouTube questions. Um, Tom Barron says, Hi mate, can you give me some tips on catching rainbow trout on lows? Uh, so, like most trout, little lows. So first of all, you want to be fishing a reservoir that's got rainbow trout in. So, um, some of these fly fishing places will let you fish them, as you probably know because you're, you're asking for them. But, but little cranks like this, Excuse the mess, but any little cranks like that, little salmos, um, spinners, there's nothing nothing made, you know, a little size two meps. Um, you can use little soft plastics like, you know, the little coffee toes, these will work, that kind of thing. Um, and when they're, when they're feeling like they want to feed, they will take any of those, no problem. But it's not something I fish loads for. I've caught them on these little reservoirs. But what they actually use sometimes is the scale really down and use like um, little small tail baits, you know, split tails and all that kind of stuff, little pinks and stuff like that. And they're just, you know, fishing really light stuff. And sometimes that can be good for rainbow trout. But it's not really my thing. Um, uh, I fished for them a couple of times. And when I fished, I've just used little cranks and spinners and I've caught nothing, spe nothing spectacular. They tend to. Um, 
fisher reservoir you tend to walk around the reservoir and cast as far as you can so you want some light line to get you out so you can cast as far as possible um, and just walk around and sometimes especially late summer you'll see them on circus and stuff you, you know where they are and you just you just cast it out and spin a little crank uh, and cover water um, and they eat pretty fast uh, if, you, if you catch a fatty they'll, they'll, they'll put up a decent scrap so uh, they're a bit mental um, expect to lose some and miss some so but yeah, uh, scaling down to little little softies is, is the way you could even drop shot and all that kind of thing, but it's not my thing. But yeah, just cramps and spinners, it'll work. <laughs> UK perch fishing, which is my mate Ben, Ben Coleman, um, he said, what's the best phone to use so that it doesn't end up knackered after falling in the river? Um, I'm speaking from experience, mate, innit? He, um, well, me and Ben went fishing, trout fishing, and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> he'd, uh, he'd, he'd caught plenty of trout before but he wanted to catch a bigger trout and we went somewhere where we've got a chance of catching bigger trout and we caught some better fish and uh, <laughs> we took some photos of course you, you take photos on your, on your mate's phone so we you know on Ben's phone so we got on phone he got home and then um, <laughs> we were netting a fish <laughs> and he just came out of his pocket and went straight in and you know them slow motion moments and you're like that's all he's pictures from his um, his big fish so I think we've managed to scrape something between what we got but um, he missed out on the best and I think he, he managed to recover the phone but he got a new one eventually but um, yeah Class, classic we're off back out again soon when uh, when lockdown's over we'll get back out again yeah. Joe Joe Bridles asked could, can you answer who some of your custom lure makers are and what is your favourite custom jerk bait um, you seen my recent jerk bait video so my favourite at the minute is the new Bertox um, just because one I'm selling them so that's one of the reasons why I say it's my favourite but one because it works it's like a cobs that we you know we couldn't get all the years ago and uh, I've just enjoyed using them because they're like I said they're new, they're new to me they're as new to me as they are to most people over here and um, they're, they're a great low that's an 8T you know, it's, a, it's a good size and um, I enjoy fishing but same sort of thing I'd, I'd fish small lows like that same, same maker as make so but so Custom lure makers that make stuff out of your own table. Ben 10 from PM Lowe's. That's a Robinson Clyder from Barry Robinson Lowe's. Um, I've got some more customs in here. Ryan Lambert don't make enough custom lures. That's one of his bad boys. Um, Matt Holmes. He's like. Um, he, he's gone, he's disappeared, he's gone underground as, as Matt has gone quiet, I don't like all his social media stuff and everybody, everybody's out on bank but Matt used to make these jerks and they are, they're really nice, proper, you know, they're made to last, that's, that's years and years old. Uh, they're gorgeous baits but you can't get those and people sell them on eBay for silly money now, a bit like the Wolf Creek lows. So custom lows, Wolf Creek from Sweden, um, I don't own them in because they're ridiculously expensive and I'm not, I'm, I do like a custom bait or I'm not paying silly money just to make somebody else's pocket full. Um, again another Robinson lure. Make some class lures some of these lads. Too many lures to fish to be honest. Um, Dave Greenwood uh, on, on Facebook. Check him out. He makes some crack, cracking lures. Uh, Peter Temple. I've not got any of these lures but I, I, a lot of lads are saying how good they are and you can see them on Facebook. They're really good. Um, what do you say? My favourite custom jerk bait. I've got cobs in here somewhere. That that'd be up there. One of my favourites. Cobs. I've got cobs tail bait. Um. I do change my mind often. I do change my mind often. Um. Stick with me. I lie. I have got a Wolf Creek. Wolf Creek tail bait. That I got when I was in Sweden. And I, didn't, I didn't pay silly money for it. I bought it from Sora Sport Fisk. Cracking lure. These lures are coming going for silly money these days. I've not caught a fish on it. I hardly use it to be honest. Uh, I like, like I say, I enjoy using things like, you know, the PM lures. You know, lads who you kind of, you know, I fish with, uh, I fish with Mark. So, you, you know, you know him. I fish with Matt from the, um, we make those ones years ago. The cruel baits. All of the cruel baits jerks are cracking jerks. Um, come in three sizes. Uh, and the catch fish. 
I love using those. Not only that much piranha, all the things natural to the UK. Um, I haven't really got a favourite, I just keep changing my mind every two minutes. JW Lowe's, another Swedish flow maker. Class Lowe's about. Everyone has their own favourites. Most of these lads that make custom Lowe's have, have got it got it sussed, you know, these, especially the ones you've heard of, you know, they've got it sussed. The quality frame jobs, quality finish, they're all worth it. And they all do a little bit different, so. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what we got? Open fish nuts. My buddy, how are you doing? Uh, I've ice melted yet. Um, and first of all, I'll just put that it was serious because I broke out Yorkshire tea in my first video, which yeah, we did. Uh, what we got now? Question of a decade. <laughs> uh, for your leader, is it heavy fluorocarbon or titanium? Well, I get shot if I answer this question. Got my answer. Both. There's no right or wrong for me. Titanium, I fish a lot of jerk baits. Fluorocarbon's rubbish for most jerk baits. Titanium's miles better. Fluorocarbon's too it's too thick diameter. It's got too much resistance, it affects your low. Um, it affects our working water, so mostly no good for jerk baits. Titanium all the way. Um, that's a Chico Craig's. I now make my own from the Kahira wire and I make them large longer than that. I prefer them to be that sort of length. Yeah, but yeah, I've used that. That's a, a, a use and abuse one that I've had for years. Keep it as a spare. Um, for a carbon leader, this is actually one that. Let me have a look. This is one I keep spared in my bag when I fish, when I, when I attach my underwater camera. However, it's not really easy. There's a couple, a couple of tiny, tiny scratches, marks, where um, pike have bitten it. So this fluorocarbon leader was made for me by Jovan Hoagland from Catch Bigger, and he made me that, um, and I used it for two years. Not even bullshitting. Probably Jovan never uses them that long. I used it for two years and I've got some scratch marks there and some, no, no massive deep marks that, that would have me, but some, some scratch marks. And I now use that, that one for attaching my underwater camera on. I've got an underwater um, um, goldfish cam and I, I use that just to attach it. But um, great for soft baits, great for when you're fishing in Sweden, um, spinner baits and stuff in, in amongst. The, the reeds and that, it's uh, thicker diameter. If you do get tangled in reeds and stuff, you, you know the titanium can kink and it can't snap. Um, whereas this stuff, it, it, don't, it, don't, it don't dig in, it don't cut in. Uh, I use both. Um, only thing I'd say is if you're using fluorocarbon for pike fishing, um, this stuff is 1.25 millimeter. I've got one from uh, Richard Hayes, and he says, uh, "What do you think of the Westin release rig?" Um, he says, "I've tried them. I have to stick a bit of lead on my lure." So the re release rig's the one where so a standard. It's similar to the soft bait version, the one that came with the uh, like the Savage Gear line through trouts, where the soft lure slides that will that will just trace. So the Westin release rig is basically one that you can attach to your to your hard baits and it's basically forget these two hooks you've got a, a system that connects to your to your clip and then runs underneath and it's, it's a separate um, rig and it works on your hard baits and then as, as your fish hits it releases and you basically yeah, you lure without the hooks is away from your trace sorry the rig with the hooks on 
And it, again, it, it's supposedly um, means they've got less leverage and all this kind of thing to get the, to the lower back out of the mouth, which in theory that should be a good thing. Um, I've not tried it. Um, I did see it, and again, you always see these new things, and it's hard to work out if things are a gimmick or if it actually work. And to be honest, the only way I know if it works is if I actually try one, and I've not tried it yet. But um, I like the idea, I like the, f the thinking behind it that you know you've got this lure that's now not in its mouth. Um, it might help hook up. It, it might do, um, but I've not tried it, so I can't give you a proper answer. Uh, Paul Reed. Uh, live Q&A session would be cool, so yeah, I've, I've kind of got it soft, so I'm going to do one soon, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, so yeah, cheers for that. Um, <laughs> some YouTube names are class, um, some, I would I would have said this one five years ago, but I now know that kids watch it, so Constructive C, let's call it. Um, uh, it's just just a comment. It's put. I'm moving uh, some better hooks onto some lures that have worked well and been neglected. Yeah, I've got same. I've got a drawer full of lures that I, I, I don't use enough. Uh, I've got a an old rig there. It's got some rusty old hooks on it. You know, and, and I tend to be my a lot of my lures. So yeah, a lot of my lures have got hooks on like that. They're just rusty old things. So uh, I've just bought some new hooks. I've got hooks and hooks and hooks. So I'm, I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to put some new hooks on some of my old lures and. And dig them back out and have a play because um, it's nice to use different lows. You get used to the same use all, lows all the time and it gets boring. There's so many to choose and so many, so many to use. So, um, but it's got three free one <laughs> from injuries <laughs> and a semi facing on the back of my hand. So, yeah, stay safe to yourself, mate. Um, boo Boo, so it's Boo Sefton. Um, have you low fished in the dark? I've heard people trying it. It's just when the dark nights are here, when I finish work, there's a real close. Uh, I fish it in daylight, just wondered about the night if it would take the noisy low. So, pike, uh, I know you've caught some pike, Bill, so you, you have a, probably had a close look at them. Look at a pike's head, um, it's got little holes in it, pits in it, and all kind of thing. And these are all different, I don't understand them all, but these are all different kind of sensors that they get. They can scent, they can taste it, they can hear, they can smell, they can, uh, they can feel it. Um, so, yeah, so I fished at night. Uh, or first couple hours, either the first couple hours in tonight or the first couple hours on the morning um, and I've caught, uh, I won't say I've done loads of night fishing um, but the first thing if you do, what you want to do is make sure you've got all the tools that you need to have so you, you know you take them with you anyway but have them so you know exactly where they are <coughs> so you're either in the pocket or attached to you uh, or in a bag that's you know exactly where it is um, make sure you've got a, a head torch and maybe even something a bit bigger if you need to, but at least a head torch that you know is you know, going to last you. Because when you do hook a fish, you know how scary it is when there's hooks and teeth everywhere anyway. So if, if um, it's in the dark, trust me, you shit yourself. Um, uh, so as being prepared the main thing. When you do catch a pike, you will catch one. So when you do catch a pike, you, you're all sorted. You're unhooking mat and everything. Um, low wise, yet yeah, yeah, noisy lows, exactly good good thing to, to think about but I'll also say to you uh, so Martin Smith MS Custom Flies Fly Fisherman probably before the days of power rattles and all this kind of stuff that have now come to fly fishing a standard fly a standard pike fly um, and I can remember him catching a pike in dark and putting it on Facebook there you go pike in dark on a fly there's hardly any vibration Hardly any noise, hardly anything from that compared to a, a, a lure, uh, and they find it. Pike are awesome. Pike are just awesome predators. They'll, they'll find it. But yeah, but give them something a bit, slow it down a little bit. Um, a bit of noise is good just to help them move in on it. A bit of vibration, something like that. But slow it down a bit so they can get to it, and it's not you've not pulled it away from them too quickly. And give it a go, mate. If, if you're fishing the same spots where um, you're catching fish, you might find that night fishing is um, is the answer. I know the lads that fish on nights and they do really well catching pike, especially big pike. Pike get pressurised and they'll go where we live, I know where you live mate, where we live, um, it's there's a lot of people fish the same rivers and canals because that's all we've got to fish, we're not, we don't live in Sweden and, and switching tonight can, can be awesome. So just be tooled up, ready, have all your gear, head torch and have a spare head torch. 
practice taking photographs in dark because first time you catch a big fish and you want to take a photograph um, you'll realise it's not easy to take a picture in dark on your own when it's put flash on you get all you just got a white image so just practice things. Um, Alan Evans asked me and I've answered in a, in a previous live stream test Alan Evans asked me if anywhere to buy gator rods. Nobody's not in UK not currently so you've got to get them from Sweden. Leech store there's probably some other European shops but Leech store sell them um, so the sport fisk uh, and a few shops in Sweden but yeah uh, nobody, nobody just yet. Nathaniel Budwelski he's asked if I pronounce that right he's asked about braid uh, how it affects lower action, depth, speed, and all that, and, and just by it's a good question. Uh, but basically, I've got a video coming very soon that's about that, so that's um, that's covered. Well, I might have already covered it, I can't remember. I'm gonna put this video up, but yeah, that's already covered. Um, again, Bobster, what would really help me with a guide to balancing matching tackle, what way of bread, trace, blah, blah, etc. Um, again, uh, Neil's done that one for us, so we've got that one coming up, so we've got a full, full video on that. Um, so I'll not babble on about them like that. So yeah, we're doing well between us. We're covering some some stuff. Um, uh, my buddy Martin Worship, uh, he's asked me. He said um, he's bought one of these off me, the XL Grub. Um, and when he's rigged it, this is a really old one. When he's rigged it, um, it's for some reason spinning in the water when it's when it's coming. So we don't do that. So the only thing I can say to you is. I've never had it happen to me, so I don't know the answer. But so if that's my what you if that's my law, you'll see the colour actually on this one helps you. So the green bit, the dark green bit is the top, and the light green bit is the bottom. And your logo is in that position. Yep. And all I do is put a, a screw in. I've got I've done it with weighted screws and unweighted screws. I've never had any issues with it spinning, so I don't know. Make it centre. Screw it in. This, I'm not teaching you it's okay you've probably done this so I don't know what your reason is screw it in and then at that point you can see um, the bit that I put my clip on I just twist it until that comes to the top and it's straight you can glue it in if you want to and so in that position the clips the clip connectors at the top and the, and the tails that way typically if you put a tail that way on, a, on a, any tail bait, so these are wolf tails and all that kind of thing, your lure will want to come up in the water. Not loads of these because they're quite heavy, but other lures will come up. If you do it with the tail down, your fish will want, your lure wants to come down. So, But I, I do it that way. Um, ignore my rig because it's an old bad rig from, from Sweden. It's rusty. Pin it in place, and it's uh, as basic as that. That's all I do. I know you said you've used the BFT stinger, I've not used the BFT one, I presume it's similar to this one. And um, that should work. I'll tend to stick my back hook in, in place, and sometimes even stick that one in. And that's it. Um, trace, so I've got a titanium trace from Chico, which is what most people are using. It's got a swivel on the top, and no swivel on the bottom. Uh, the one I've made on mine has got a swivel on both sides, and that's not made it. That's not made it swivel either. So I'm not sure what the answer to is. So if anybody got the answer to that one, stick in comments. If anybody else had that um, problem with the uh, the big grub spinning, I've not. I've used fluorocarbon trace, and I've not had the issue. So I don't know what the answer is. But yeah, that's all you can do is just just check yours is something like that. I mean, if it were on on the side, I don't know what it'd do if it were all rigged sideways. Make sure you. Yeah, your hooks are straight. I tend to hook them in like that. I think this is the last question on this one from so far. I think the last question of this is from Ron Lamb, and he's put my views, opinion on on BFS bait casting for trout, etc. Um, he says, but you notice that I use uh, fixed spool for all meal trout stuff. Uh, any reason? And have you gave BFS a will yet? So, if you don't know what BFS is, BFS is them that has that sale of set eight. No, it's not them that have sales of set eight. I'll be back from this. No, BFS is the a bait caster, but light bait caster. Um, I don't know what BFS stands for. Uh, as you know me, I'm not. I'm not the tie angler. I'm not one that's following all the phases and fads and stuff. 
Um, it looks good for them. The really tiny outfits that they've got um, look really good. And if you can fish, the bait casts are really light and really good. But I've always found that when you go lighter with bait casters, it's more of a finicky fanning about trying to get your, your bait caster set up, your line right and all this. And those guys that do it have obviously got it set up. They know what they're doing. They know what gear they want, what, what they're buying, you know, what line to use, what uh, how to set up the... the, the the little multiplier reels, uh, the bait caster reels, but um, I've never got patience, and um, I know that once you get it set up, you can, you know, you can proper whip it underneath a tree and all that kind of thing. So your accuracy and your casting can be really good. Um, but I've just kind of found that when I've got lighter and lighter on, on the bait casters, it's got harder and harder to fish. So I've got a, a, a bait caster combo that's three to fifteen. So that's not BFS, but three to fifteen, and then I can use a three to fifteen jigging rod and cast nearly twice, nearly three times as far, um, so uh, I just kind of think I'll stick to fixed spool. When you get the heavy stuff, I, I definitely use, use a bait caster and, uh, on, the, on the heavy stuff, but the BFS stuff, it looks good and if somebody, if somebody wants to give me, the, let me tag along with them and I'll have a go with their little BFS set up and, and I'll know what to use and then maybe, maybe but I'm not, I'm not spending um, you know, a couple hundred quid on a setup for me to find out it's not for me, so uh, that's probably why I like my little fixed spool. I've got this one, as you've seen. Oh, on its dead right, I'm happy with it. Little Pro Rex XR, not sponsored by Pro Rex, not, not pushing them, but I've got a couple of day with XR rods that are really nice. My little trouty rod, uh, six pound braid on it, so I'm really light. Um, I'm usually wading when I'm fishing with that. So if I were, if I were fishing from bank, I'd be I'd be fishing with like ten pound braid just to give me a little bit more strength. But six pound braid, if I do snap off, I can get my little back. If I've got waders on, and uh, that's what I prefer. That's what I've been fishing with. And, and like I said, the only reason I'm not going for the BFS is because I always imagined I might be wrong. I always imagined I'd have to buy a more expensive reel to be able to to do that casting properly. And, uh, and, and messing about with different rods, no, that's not right. Buy another one, that's not right. Uh, but yeah, um, there's some lads out there. So check lads out on, on Facebook, the BFS, um, which I'm sure you that's what you're on. The BFS trout lads, they, they know what they're doing there, they're enjoying it, so it must work. Um, I've just not give it a go. So yeah. So hopefully, after all that babbling on, that's answered a few questions. I'm going to do more of this. Um, I just want to get this one done because that's all a set of questions out of way. But we'll do some more, some live stuff, and you know, the live stuff's quite funny because. I ain't got a clue what I'm doing, um, so <laughs> just <laughs> make sure you tune in. So uh, yeah, cheers up these um, little, little videos help you, these little Q&As and tips and all this stuff. I've got more to come, I've got loads to come, um, so I'll stick with it and it'll pass us five or ten minutes on each day or every couple of days and it might answer a few questions and hopefully we'll get through this. Stay safe, um, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, I always forget that. Like, subscribe it and uh, let's hope we're fishing soon.